I'm now speaking with Bill Collins, candidate for mayor of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Bill, welcome here to the show. Thank you. Why are you running for mayor of Fort Wayne, Indiana? Well, it started out as just a discussion with some friends of mine who said, uh, you know, we grew up as Americans and think that anybody in the world is, is, uh, has the opportunity to run for office, for public office, and stand for, to represent people. And they said, well, you know, nowadays that's not possible anymore. And I said, well, sure it is. And I went down and registered for mayor. And as you got into it more and started reading more stuff, I started realizing that, you know, maybe there, maybe there is an opportunity for more people to, uh, to come out of the regular people ranks. And, uh, and run for public office. It's very difficult to do because the system is pretty much stacked against you if you're not one of the elite, have a big name, um, one of the party regulars, or already in public office. And I don't want to be a career politician. We don't need career politicians. But knowing all that, but I mean, but why are you entering? I mean, what are you dissatisfied with? You know, Mayor Henry's done a great job. Uh, the city's a place still to be proud of. I'm proud to live here. You know, I've lived here for quite a while. Um, Mayor Henry can do, I think that there's a lot more that can be done as far as listening to people, energizing the younger voters, energizing the younger residents of the city who have given up and just said, you know, I, uh, there's nothing here for me. I can't, nobody listens to me. What does it do for me to, to get involved? That's one of the things that we really want to address with this uh, candidate's <coughs> forum here coming up because <coughs> we invited the uh, schools and the seniors to come out. You know, why do you feel that if you do, that it's a good idea uh, for younger people and people who are familiar with the process to come out and partake in a political forum. I look at the, I have a number of people that I work with <coughs> in the uh, volunteer part of the American Legion where I volunteer. And um, there are so many people that just, I've, I've said, are you going to vote? You know, are you going to look into the issues? And they just have given up, said, I'm not going to anymore because it doesn't matter what I do. You know, that's not the way this country was set up. It's not the way it's supposed to be. And the more people that can get involved and listen, forums are a great a great avenue for that. Newspapers used to be. Facebook is now the, the deal, you know, where people can learn things. But they need to start understanding what it is that they can do and that the city can do for them or the county or the state or the federal government can do for them in conjunction with what they can do for themselves. But uh, still, you know, a lot of times they from what I'm finding out, are intimidated mm -hmm. about the idea of getting up in front of people and speaking like that. Now, this is your first time running for political office. What do you get the nerve and the confidence from? I mean, how do you, what do you harness to be the one to get up and just uh, confront the issue or even an, an opponent? Well, it helped me because I spent over 20 years as a radio morning show announcer. I'm not afraid to get up in front of people and say stuff, and I'm certainly not afraid to uh, be laughed at, uh, which unfortunately is one of the things you have to be prepared to do if you're going to run for public office. The first time I went down to Republican headquarters, I'm not one of the crowd. I'm not, you know, very few people know me. I know Steve Shine because we worked together for a long time as he was did some broadcasting work as well. Um, but that's the only way I knew Steve. And, uh, but I don't know very many people, and they kind of look at you like, you know, the, the current councilman and the current you know, the, the other candidates in the Republican Party look at you like, you know, we're the people. We're the, we're the ones that are running this organization, and you're not. You know, one of the things that I've noticed over the years, you know, a while back, once upon a time, the entrepreneurial spirit was more pushed. Mm -hmm. And uh, years ago, I had a chance to interview Jack Kemp. And when I asked him the question, is now a good time to start a business, and his answers were always, it's always a good time well, and it is. to start a business. Mm -hmm. But why, why, why have we gotten away from that uh, mindset and where we put more uh, emphasis on what can you, the candidate or the political leader, do for me, instead of you uh, having part of your agenda to help me help myself? It is always a good time to start a business. It's always a good time to say something. It's always a good time to get, always a good time to get involved. Always. Um, it's interesting that when you talked about what can we do in conjunction to get people to help help themselves. One of the questions at the editorial board of the newspaper was, you know, I said I want to get young people involved, and he said, well, the city is getting, you know, some apartments downtown, getting stuff that is available for young people, 
And unfortunately, I said, that's being reactive to the situation. We need to send people out every day to get people to be proactive. We need to be proactive to get people to understand what they can do to help themselves instead of just waiting by a telephone for them to call us and say, hey, can you help me? You know, over the past year, we've sent our scouts all across the country, mm -hmm. all, all around the world, basically, to find ideas and concepts to bring back to Fort Wayne mm -hmm. to help build Fort Wayne and beautify it and attract more people to it. You know, what, what, what do you see Fort Wayne being? I mean, when you ask a lot of people, what is Fort Wayne? You know, you get all kind of answers and, and nothing clear. What do you see Fort Wayne being now and what it can be in the next few years? Well, there's a couple answers to that question. Number one, I'm not a big fan of sending scouts all over the world to send anywhere to see what we need to do here. We've got a lot of great smart people and a lot of great talented people right here in Fort Wayne that, that probably know what needs to be done here. We just haven't asked them. We send people out to every other place and say, hey, here's what we need to come back and do. You know, we can do that right here. You know, we, One of my big pushes and a lot of my bullet points is we need to keep our money in Fort Wayne here in Fort Wayne. We don't need to buy products out of town if we can help it. We don't need to get consultants from Utah if we can help it. We don't need to get anything. We can do stuff right here. Um, I think it's extremely important. What do I see Fort Wayne as being? I see Fort Wayne as being a place that everybody, everybody is proud to live in. This is a very diverse city. I mean, extremely diverse anymore. Um, it, you know, and it wasn't always the case, but it is much more diverse than, than a number of other cities. Uh, and basically does pretty well. Can it be better? Sure it can. It can, every, it can always be better. Uh, we need to really work on that section of the diversity and make sure that the entire city, not just the downtown, is, is a big hot point. Not just the north side, not just the Boyd, the southwest. You know, not just focus on the southeast, but focus on the entire city as a whole and say, hey, let's make this city a better place, a place where all the residents are proud to be a part of. Now, you, <clears throat> you mentioned you mentioned diversity. You know, right now there's a movement for inclusion, mm -hmm. you know, going on. And uh, one thing, it's almost what I see is like a, like a conceptual flaw. Because if you focus on including the new immigrants mm -hmm. here, the uh, LGBT, the real tall people, the real short people, People with three legs, you know. If you pull, all, you know, if you start focusing on, on all of them, at some point in time, you have to, in my estimation, focus on <clears throat> why we're having an an inclusion movement. Because what I'm getting at is that implies that there was exclusion at some point, and when you look into Fort Wayne history, you'll see there's no more Indians here, and uh, blacks were not were. Uh, in the Indiana Constitution back in 1850, they didn't want them here. Mm -hmm. So it, was, it would seem like that as you're starting a movement like that, yes, focus on today and the benefits of today, but it has to be anchored. Because if you create a concept with no base, you have to create another concept in another couple of years because it's going to fall apart. Um, <laughs> this is such an uncomfortable topic. You know, I might, let's talk about religion. And you know, the problem in the Middle East instead, you know, I, it's, uh, I, uh, for instance, I was discussing with a friend of mine at, uh, at our gaming facility, I'm not a big fan of Metro Human Relations Committee, primarily because I feel strongly that if some person is getting wronged, I don't really care what color they are, what their race is, what their background is, whatever they are, they're being wronged and we need to fix it. it Metro Human Relations has got the, to many of the business people in town, has got the uh, stigma of only protecting black people. Now, is that fair? No. Because is it any more wrong if I'm wrong than if you're wrong? Certainly not. Um, and I think that everybody needs to be taken care of in this town. And that's why the diversity problem is becoming, there's, there's so many more Asians. There, I mean, there is every, every ethnicity in the world you can think of is is becoming more and more prevalent in this town. And by and large, we all get along, and we need to, and we should, and we can. We just don't. We choose not to sometimes. Well, <clears throat> excuse me, with the different ethnic groups, but what, I, what I've noticed is Fort Wayne, 
for the size that we are, mm -hmm. you can walk in a, in a real small block radius and cover a lot of nationalities. Oh, yeah. And, and it's, it would seem as though that we, would, we should be in a position to be a miniature um, world nation right here in Fort Wayne by working and organizing those people. You know, once you become mayor, how innovative will you be in the, you know, with the idea of extracting the good points from the different ethnic groups that are here that can be a benefit to Fort Wayne people? You know, I, that's a good question. I really, I really don't know the answer to that. I, I, I would love to see, I would love to see more ethnic restaurants in some of the areas. I mean, I love eating. Eating is a big good. I'm a big fan of eating. Um, I'd love to see some more ethnic restaurants that are, you know, in every area of the town and have people feel safe to go in there, have the restaurants feel good about being in the area, you know, give them a little break on helping them get built and make in that, in that way. If we start getting businesses into some of these areas, then the whole neighborhood gets better and everybody benefits from that. But I, as far as ethnic groups and making them uh, pulling out the good points. I'm, you know, I'm not a big fan of having separate, <coughs> excuse me, separate groups be, you know, be a separate entity into themselves. We're city residents. We're all residents of Fort Wayne. We're all citizens of the city. Um, we aren't a bunch of separate groups, you know, just living next door to each other. Hopefully we're all people that are, in the end, want all the same thing. We want to raise our kids, we want to raise our, you know, keep our family safe, have a job, um, and drive on nice roads and have water that doesn't smell. You know, I mean, we all want the same thing. You know, on what issue uh, do you want to uh, share with us that we haven't really discussed yet? You know, my biggest issues <coughs> excuse me, are uh, getting over this cold. <laughs> my biggest issues are, you know, getting the younger people involved, getting the people that don't, and not necessarily younger, but getting the people that aren't involved, involved. That's probably the biggest issue. The second biggest issue is keeping the money that is made in Fort Wayne here in Fort Wayne. Let's let's use local people to do the local stuff. Um, I can't see any reason why we don't do that. Um, you know, we've got building projects all over the place, and we've got tons of big uh, companies here that can handle the jobs. Uh, we, consultants, we we go out of town to look at people when we want to do something big and have a consultant. We've got people that can that have certainly have the mental capacity to do that stuff right here in town, and we're not doing it. That we're sending the money out of town. Uh, you know, let's buy our products from here if we can, at least from somebody, a distributor here in town, even if the product isn't made here. Let's, let's do something here. Let's keep the money here as much as we can. Those are probably the two biggest things I, that I like to talk about. And last thing here, for the people who don't know you or know your background, what do you want to tell them about yourself that uh, makes you such an attractive candidate and why they should want to vote for you? I'm a great guy. Um, you know, I, I was a radio disc jockey for a long time. I worked here in country radio, did a morning show here in town for a number of years on QHK and WBTU. I, uh, you know, I uh, owned with a partner a trucking company uh, here in town, and uh, that we ran trucks all over the country. And they had a, a big a food grade warehouse, 100,000 square foot food grade warehouse. Um, I have a couple grandkids live here in town, and one in Rhode Island, and a son in Denver. And, daughter of Rhode Island, and, and, and I'm married, I'm a pretty good guy. Go to church up at Pathway Community Church up on the north side of town. Used to go to fellowship right down the road here. Used to live in Crown Colony on this side of town. Kids both graduated from Concordia. That's about it. Okay, well thank you very much. Good luck with the campaign. Thank you, sir. And I like your sweater. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you for watching.